In the competitive field of network engineering, preparing for interviews is crucial. This video presents a curated list of the top 25 interview questions commonly asked in network engineering positions. Each question is accompanied by detailed answers to help you understand the concepts better. Whether you're a novice or an experienced professional, this guide aims to enhance your interview preparation. 1. Can you explain the OSI model and its layers? The OSI, Open Systems Interconnection, model is a conceptual framework used to understand network communications across different systems. It consists of seven layers. 1. Physical layer. Deals with the transmission of raw bit streams over a physical medium. 2. Data link layer. Provides node-to-node -node data transfer and handles error correction from the physical layer. 3. Network layer. Responsible for routing packets across different networks. 4. Transport layer. Ensures complete data transfer with error recovery and flow control. 5. Session layer. Manages sessions between applications. 6. Presentation layer. Translates data formats, encryption, and compression. 7. Application layer. Interfaces with end-user applications to provide network services. This model helps in troubleshooting and designing networks by clearly defining each layer's function. 2. What's the difference between a hub, switch, and router? A hub is a basic networking device that connects multiple Ethernet devices, making them act as a single network segment. It operates at the physical layer, layer 1, of the OSI model and broadcasts data to all connected devices, which can lead to collisions and inefficiencies. A switch, on the other hand, operates at the data link layer, layer 2. It intelligently forwards data only to the device for which it is intended, using MAC addresses. This reduces collisions and increases network efficiency. A router, functioning at the network layer, layer 3, connects different networks and routes data between them based on IP addresses. It can also provide additional features like NAT, firewall capabilities, and DHCP, making it essential for connecting to the internet. 3. How would you troubleshoot a network connectivity issue? When troubleshooting a network connectivity issue, start by verifying physical connections, ensuring cables are properly seated and devices are powered on. Use the ping command to test connectivity between devices and identify where the failure occurs. Check IP configurations with IP config or IF config, ensuring devices are on the same subnet. Examine router and switch configurations for any misconfigurations and review firewall settings that might block traffic. Utilize tools like Traceroute to identify where packets are being dropped and monitor network traffic for anomalies. Document findings and steps taken for future reference. 4. Explain the concept of subnetting and its importance. Subnetting is the process of dividing a larger network into smaller, more manageable subnetworks or subnets. This practice enhances network performance by reducing broadcast domains, which decreases network congestion. Subnetting also improves security by isolating network segments, allowing for more controlled access to resources. It enables efficient IP address utilization by allowing networks to scale as needed. Through subnetting, network administrators can simplify management tasks such as troubleshooting, monitoring, and implementing security policies. 5. What is versus LAN and how does it work? AVLAN, Virtual Local Area Network, is a logical grouping of devices on a network that are segmented to improve performance and security. VLANs allow network administrators to separate broadcast domains without requiring separate physical infrastructure. Each VLAN is identified by a unique VLAN ID when a switch receives a frame, it checks the VLAN tag and forwards the frame only to the ports that belong to that VLAN. This segmentation enhances security by isolating sensitive data and reduces broadcast traffic, improving network efficiency. 6. Can you describe the difference between TCP and UDP? TCP, Transmission Control Protocol, is a connection-oriented protocol that ensures reliable data transmission through error checking, acknowledgements, and sequencing. It establishes a connection before data transfer, making it suitable for applications where data integrity is crucial, such as web browsing and email. UDP, User Datagram Protocol, on the other hand, is a connectionless protocol that does not guarantee delivery or order of packets. It is faster and has lower latency, making it ideal for applications like video streaming and online gaming, where speed is more critical than reliability. Each protocol serves different needs based on the application requirements. 7. What are some common network security threats and how would you mitigate them? Network security threats include malware, phishing attacks, denial of service, duess, attacks, and insider threats. To mitigate these threats, organizations should implement a multi-layered security approach. This includes using firewalls to filter traffic, deploying intrusion detection systems, IDS, to monitor for suspicious activities, and employing endpoint protection solutions. Regular employee training on recognizing phishing attempts and safe online practices is vital. Keeping software updated and applying security patches promptly helps close vulnerabilities. Utilizing strong authentication methods, such as multi-factor authentication, MFA, adds an extra layer of security against unauthorized access. 8. Explain the purpose and function of DHCP. Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, DHCP, 
automates the process of assigning IP addresses and other network configuration settings to devices on a network. Its primary purpose is to centralize and simplify IP address management, reducing the risk of conflicts and errors. When a device connects to the network, it sends a request for an IP address, and the DHCP server responds with an available address from a predefined range. DHCP can also provide additional information, such as subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS server addresses, ensuring devices can effectively communicate within the network. 9. What is NAT and when would you use it? NAT, or Network Address Translation, is a method used in networking to modify the IP address information in packet headers while they are in transit. It allows multiple devices on a local network to share a single public IP address for accessing the internet. NAT is essential when there are limited public IP addresses available, as it conserves address space. It's commonly used in home routers, enabling devices like smartphones and computers to connect to the internet without needing unique public IP addresses. NAT also adds a layer of security by obscuring internal IP addresses from external networks. 10. How does DNS resolution work? DNS resolution works by translating human-readable domain names into IP addresses. When a user enters a website URL, their device sends a query to a DNS resolver, typically provided by their ISP. The resolver first checks its cache for the IP address. If not found, it queries a root DNS server, which directs it to the appropriate top-level domain, TLD, server based on the domain extension. The TLD server then points the resolver to the authoritative DNS server for the domain, which finally provides the correct IP address. This process enables users to access websites without needing to memorize numeric IP addresses. 11. What is BGP and how does it function in routing? BGP, or Border Gateway Protocol, is the protocol used to exchange routing information between different autonomous systems, as, on the internet. It operates at the application layer and is classified as a path vector protocol. BGP maintains a table of network paths, allowing routers to make intelligent routing decisions based on various attributes, such as path length and policy. When a BGP router receives updates from its peers, it evaluates the best path to reach a destination and propagates this information to other routers, ensuring efficient and reliable data transmission across complex networks. 12. Can you explain the difference between static and dynamic routing? Static routing involves manually configuring routes in a network. Network administrators specify the exact path that data should take to reach its destination. This method is simple and efficient for small networks but lacks flexibility, as changes in the network topology require manual updates to the routing table. Dynamic routing, on the other hand, allows routers to automatically discover and maintain routes. They use protocols like RIP, OSPF, or EIGRP to communicate with one another, adapting to changes in the network. This makes dynamic routing more scalable and efficient in larger or more complex environments, as it can respond to network changes in real time. 13. What tools do you use for network monitoring and analysis? For network monitoring and analysis, I utilize a variety of tools, such as Wireshark for packet analysis, which allows for deep inspection of network traffic. Nagios and Zabbix are essential for monitoring network devices and services, providing alerts on performance issues. SolarWinds is another powerful tool that offers comprehensive network performance monitoring and management capabilities. Additionally, I often use PRTG Network Monitor for real-time insights into network health and performance metrics. These tools collectively help in identifying bottlenecks, tracking network usage, and ensuring optimal performance. 14. How would you design a network for high availability? Designing a network for high availability involves several key strategies. First, implement redundancy at every critical point, including switches, routers, and links. Utilize protocols like HSRP or VRRP for router redundancy. Second, consider load balancing across multiple servers to distribute traffic evenly. Third, deploy multiple internet connections from different ISPs to ensure continuous access. Implementing a robust monitoring system will help quickly identify and address any failures. Regular testing of failover processes is essential to ensure they work seamlessly when needed. 15. What is COS and why is it important in networking? Quality of service, COS, refers to the set of technologies and techniques that manage network resources to ensure the performance of critical applications. It prioritizes certain types of traffic, such as voice or video, over less critical data. This prioritization is essential in environments where bandwidth is limited and latency-sensitive applications need guaranteed performance. By implementing COS, network administrators can reduce packet loss, minimize latency, and enhance the user experience, particularly in VoIP calls and video streaming, where consistent quality is vital. 16. Explain the concept of VPN and its various types. A virtual private network, VPN, creates a secure connection over the internet, ensuring privacy and data integrity. It encrypts user data, making it difficult for unauthorized entities to intercept information. There are several types of VPNs. 1. Remote Access VPN allows individual users to connect securely to a private network from a remote location. 
2. Site-to-Site -site VPN connects entire networks to each other, enabling communication between different office locations. 3. SSL TLS VPN uses web browsers for secure access to applications without client software. 4. IPSC VPN provides secure communication between network devices at the IP layer. Each type serves unique use cases, enhancing security and connectivity. 17. How do you approach capacity planning for a network? Capacity planning for a network involves assessing current usage and forecasting future needs based on growth trends, user demands, and application requirements. First, gather data on network traffic patterns, identifying peak usage times and bottlenecks. Analyze this data to determine necessary bandwidth, latency, and redundancy requirements. Implementing monitoring tools helps track performance metrics continuously. Collaborate with stakeholders to align network capacity with business objectives, ensuring scalability. Regularly reviewing and adjusting plans based on usage changes and technological advancements is essential for maintaining optimized performance. 18. What is SDN, Software Defined Networking, and its benefits? Software Defined Networking, SDN, is an approach that allows network administrators to manage network services through abstraction of lower level functionality. It decouples the network control plane from the data plane, enabling centralized control and programmability. Key benefits of SDN include enhanced network agility, simplified management, and improved resource utilization. It allows for dynamic adjustments to network traffic, easier implementation of policies, and streamlined network provisioning. SDN also fosters innovation by enabling the rapid deployment of new applications and services without extensive hardware changes. 19. Can you describe a challenging network issue you've resolved in the past? One challenging network issue I resolved involved intermittent connectivity losses in a corporate environment. After thorough investigation, I discovered that the problem was linked to a faulty network switch that was dropping packets sporadically. To address this, I first isolated the switch and examined its logs for errors. I then replaced the switch with a new one, reconfigured the VLAN settings, and tested the connections. Post-replacement, I monitored the network performance and confirmed stable connectivity. Additionally, I documented the incident and implemented a preventive maintenance schedule for network hardware, which improved reliability. 20. How do you keep up with the latest networking technologies and trends? To stay updated with the latest networking technologies and trends, I regularly follow industry-leading blogs, podcasts, and forums such as Cisco's blog, Network World, and Reddit's networking community. Attending webinars, conferences, and workshops helps me gain insights from experts and peers. Additionally, I engage in online courses and certifications to deepen my knowledge of emerging technologies like SDN, cloud networking, and security protocols. Networking with professionals through LinkedIn and participating in local user groups also provides valuable information and first-hand experiences. 21. What is your experience with cloud networking, AWS, Azure, GCP? In my experience with cloud networking, I've implemented solutions across AWS, Azure, and GCP in AWS. I utilized VPCs for isolating resources and setting up secure subnets. With Azure, I leveraged Azure Virtual Network to connect on-premises data centers with cloud resources, ensuring hybrid connectivity. In GCP, I worked with Virtual Private Cloud, VPC, to manage IP address ranges and firewall rules. I've also integrated various services like load balancers and VPN gateways across these platforms, ensuring efficient traffic management and secure connections. Each platform has its unique features, allowing for tailored solutions. 22. How would you secure a wireless network? Securing a wireless network involves several critical steps. Firstly, use WPA3 encryption to protect data transmitted over the network. Change the default SSID to something unique and disable SSID broadcasting to make the network less visible. Implement strong, complex passwords for network access and regularly update them. Set up a guest network for visitors to keep the primary network secure. Enable MAC address filtering to restrict access to specific devices. Finally, regularly monitor the network for any unauthorized access and keep the router's firmware updated to protect against vulnerabilities. 23. Explain the concept of load balancing and its importance. Load balancing is a technique used to distribute network traffic across multiple servers or resources to ensure optimal resource utilization minimize response time, and prevent overload on any single server. It enhances application availability and reliability by redirecting traffic to healthy servers when issues arise. In high traffic environments, load balancing improves user experience by maintaining performance levels. It can be implemented using hardware or software solutions, allowing organizations to scale efficiently while ensuring that no single point of failure can disrupt services. 24. What is your approach to documenting network configurations and changes? Documenting network configurations and changes is crucial for maintaining a reliable network. I start by using a standardized template that includes essential information such as device details, IP addresses, and configuration settings. Each change is logged with a timestamp, a description of the change, and the person responsible for it. 
I also employ version control for configurations to track modifications over time. Regular reviews of documentation ensure accuracy and completeness, while backups are kept secure. This practice aids in troubleshooting and enhances team collaboration, especially during transitions or onboarding new staff. 25. How would you handle a network outage during peak business hours? In the event of a network outage during peak business hours, my first step would be to assess the situation and gather information from users experiencing the issue. I would use monitoring tools to identify the scope and impact of the outage. Next, I would prioritize restoring essential services to minimize disruption. Communication is key. I would keep stakeholders informed about the status and estimated resolution time. Collaborating with the team, I would implement troubleshooting steps systematically, documenting findings for future reference. Post-resolution, I would conduct a root cause analysis to prevent recurrence. We hope this video on the top 25 network engineer interview questions and answers has equipped you with valuable insights and preparation tips. Understanding these questions can significantly enhance your confidence and performance in interviews. Remember, thorough preparation is key to landing your desired role. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more informative videos. Your support encourages us to create more resources for aspiring network engineers. Thank you for watching.